gravitation problems on freely falling bodies problem 1 a stone is allowed to fall from the top of the tower 100 meters high and at the same time another stone is projected vertically upwards from the ground with a velocity of 25 meters per second calculate when and where the two stones will meet so the given things in this example is there is a stone which is falling from the tower and there is a stone which is projected upwards from the ground and both are meeting somewhere and we need to find out when and where so let's see the main point in the sum as we read through the sum is at the same time another stone so that is an important point to capture because at the same time when a stone is projected upwards the principle that we get is the time taken for the stone which is falling from top of the tower and the time taken for the stone which is going upward will meet at the same time that is the time taken for both the stones from top and bottom will be the same so let's understand how we can figure it out pictorially the distance it travels is different so let's call from the top as h1 for the first stone and for the upward moving stone we will say h2 so the basic thing that we know is h which is 100 meters is equal to h1 plus h2 h1 is the height that the stone falling downward travel h2 is the height that the upward moving stone travel and where they meet and the time taken for the stone in both cases to the meeting point is t so t is the time taken for the stones to meet let us use the equation of law of motion s is equal to ut plus half at square or half gt square in this case instead of s because for freely falling bodies we use h so using this let's see for the stone which is falling down h1 is equal to what is the initial velocity when it is falling down u is 0 so 0 into t plus half and what is the g for falling down for the computation purposes g can be taken as 10 meter per second square so 10 into t square t is an unknown factor so which gives rise to 10 t square by 2 because it is a downward direction g is positive so h1 is 10 t square by 2 let us keep it as equation 1 now in the same way let us find out h2 h2 is equal to what is the u given in the upward case there is a velocity u which is given as u in this case is 25 meter per second so 25 t plus half and in the upward direction g becomes negative so minus 10 meter per second square so for computation purpose 9.8 can be taken as 10 into t square so this is 25 t minus 10 by 2 t square now substituting 1 in 2 so h2 is equal to 25 t minus h1 so h1 taking it this side this becomes h1 plus h2 which is nothing but h which is nothing but 100 meters so 100 is equal to 25 t now t is equal to 100 divided by 25 which is 4 seconds so the time taken for the stones to meet
is 4 seconds. Now we need to find out where they meet. Where the stones meet. Now that we know the time, we can find out. We know H1 in the previous from equation 1. H1 is equal to 10 by 2 t square. Which is nothing but 10 by 2 into t is going to be 4. So 4 into 4, 2 twos, 2 ones which is 80 meters. Since H1 plus H2 is equal to 100 meters and H2 is 100 minus H1, which is 100 minus 80, which is 20 meters. That means the stones will meet. This is coming down, this is going up and this is this H is 80 meters and this H is 20 meters. So they meet at this point. So stones meet 80 meters from top and 20 meters from bottom. Problem 2. A ball thrown up vertically returns to the thrower after 6 seconds. Find the velocity with which it was thrown up. So a ball is thrown up and it returns back after 6 seconds. So basically it means when we draw this is the ball since it is thrown up and it comes back in 6 seconds. We know that the height that it travels is the same because it comes back to the ground. So the time it takes for going up is same as the time it takes to come down since the height is the same. Since height is same, time for upward movement is equal to time for downward movement which is t. Since the total time is 6 seconds, t is 6 by 2 which is 3 seconds. So now we know t is 3 seconds. Now we need to find out the velocity with which it was thrown up. Now when it is thrown up, it reaches the height and velocity becomes 0 and comes down. So v is 0 and we need to find u. And in an upward movement, g becomes negative. So let us take this as minus 9.0 meter per second square. From the law of motion equation, we know that v is equal to u plus a t. We need to find out u and v is 0. So 0 is equal to u minus because a is nothing but g which is minus g so minus 9.8 into t is 3. So u is 9.8 into 3 which is 29.4 meter per second. So u is 29.4 meter per second. Now find the maximum height the stone reaches. We can find this out from the law of equation v square minus u square is equal to 2g h because we know v, we know u, we know g and we need to find h. And v is 0 and u is 29.4 square is equal to 2 into minus 9.8 h. So h is minus 29.4 into 29.4 divided by minus 2 into 9.8. Minus minus gets cancelled and 9.8 once 9.8 threes to 14.7s and when we multiply we get 
44.1 meters. So the height is 44.1 meters. Now let's find the third part. Its position after 4 seconds. Where will it be after 3 seconds? We know that after 3 seconds it will be on top because t is 3 seconds. It is on top. Now 1 second it has travelled down. So where will it be? It will be somewhere. Here the time is 1 second and when it is falling down the u is equal to 0 and we need to find its position. So we can find it with the equation h is equal to ut plus half gt square. Now in this case h is equal to u is 0 and half since it is now coming down because the fourth second it is coming down so g is positive. So g becomes 9.8 meter per second square. So g is 9.8 and t is 1 second. So 1 square which becomes to fours and to nines, which is nothing but 4.9 meters. So after 4 seconds, the stone will be at 4.9 meters from the top, the maximum height it reaches. So this is 4.9 meters.